Thanks for staying with us. Now, if you're just tuning in, we're trying to understand the impact of cryptocurrency on the Nigerian economy, and we have Adedeji here with us. But let us hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join this conversation. Tweet at us at WayshowAfrica1 with the hashtag Wayshow, or send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 81 So, Mori, I'll come to you. You had a question before we went on the break. Yeah, so I have, the question is for our guest, obviously. Me, I want to wake up to with 700,000 right now. I'll be so, I just want to know that if I want to deal, you know, in crypto tomorrow now, it, are there any red flags I should look for? Like, how do, how do I know that this particular dealer is genuine or this one is a fraud? Uh, like, like, like I used to tell a lot of people, um, I think the reason why people flock into it and lose money is because they are not educated on how this whole thing works. Okay. And um, somebody just tell you, uh, I was speaking with someone the other day, and he said, oh, somebody promised me 300% on a particular coin, and I want to go into it. Obviously, you should know that that is scam. Because which other thing is they doing within the economy with that money if they change it to give you back that kind of return? So, of course, you can benefit. As a matter of fact, the benefit myself, and I know within the community they have got it, just with interacting and understanding blockchain is enormous. This is just what. As a matter of fact, some few weeks ago, I just woke up again and I found another coin called One Inch, and they just gave me $740 or thereabout. Why? Bounty for just interacting with our blockchain. And they give young people like that every time. Okay, are they Deji? Every time. They can I become like your. That. You know? Adedeji, can I become your PA? Let me help you to manage your finances. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is, this, is, this is what we call the liberalization of money. You yeah. can actually have that just for knowing and interacting with it, mm -hmm. and people get it. People, people, nobody asks me for account number, for instance. They know your wallet. They know from anywhere in the world. I don't know the founders of Uni, for instance, the Uniswap exchange. I don't know the founders of One Inch, for instance. But the general thing is that we are dashing everybody that have interacted with this. You can convert your money. And so that is what our young people are getting. They are trading. So at least they know they can make $100 or $200 per day, as a matter of fact. They are not ready to take up any job. They are not ready to dust their CV, go look for work. That is the economy they operate in. And leaving them also operate like that is dangerous. And that is why, of course, the fear of central bank is legitimate to some extent. What I told you why it's not actually very, very clear for them to have done what they have done. Yeah, what, they are, what they should have done is develop capacities to actually in, investigate this infraction and bring whoever they catch within this terrain to book. Uh, okay. So giving a blanket um, ban to that, we also render some legitimate people because, of course, I don't do fraud with it. I help people to even on, on max frauds that happen. But again, I'm part of that blacklist because I can't interact with my back to buy what I want to buy because it has been banned. Hmm. So, if, so in that sense, now you blacklist the whole industry with very strong professionals that are doing stuffs and they know us around the globe that oh, this is what we do. So I think that has to be reconsidered. I and think we also help them to unmask these criminals within. I think we are very creative. We'll find a way to bypass CBN for this thing at some point. But I wanted to ask no, you. No, no, no. Is it possible? We were, uh, the young people have bypassed it. They have already bypassed it. But, but for me, I'm for the... The, the regulator that we need to check it. Yeah. Like, like I belong to the committee of the young people. I've done a series of presentations to the central bank. I've, within the time they made this presentation, I've met with them at least twice on this issue. You know, we've been there. Even this morning, I had a meeting with a couple of people from there because we are saying, okay, there are tools you can actually use to check this in and let's mm. go ahead because it's positive. You know, you can see, you just mentioned Tesla, that today when we are banning, as a matter of fact, the day we ban, that same day, the US OCC licensed some other bank to custody crypto. Mm. You know, that same day, you know, and uh, that same day, the, the, the Bank of England came up with regulation on people that want to interact with it on how the rules that they have to play with. You know, that same day, we are banning. So it just shows that the world is taking a trajectory and we must follow. You can't afford to be opposite of the market if you are trading, for instance. You have okay. to follow where the crowd goes. And, and even the central bank, I believe, acknowledge that that is where the future is. Okay. The, the risks to the economy, the risks to financial stability, those can be checked when we build capacity, when we use the industry available tools to actually answer some of the questions that are probably given the destabilizing idea about it. Okay, so Adedeji, the use of technology definitely will facilitate a financial revolution that will leave everyone really empowered, you know? So what is the difference between block blockchain rather technology and cryptocurrency, what's the difference, you know, if you want to break it down for a common yes, man? Yes, 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 there, 
their similarity, as a matter of fact, is like you trying to define uh, what is what is what is email and what is internet. Hmm. So, so email here, in my analogy, is the cryptocurrency that runs on the internet, like the email runs. When you have internet connectivity, you can send email. So if you have the blockchain, you can actually send this money. But remember I told you that the blockchain itself, having experimented this whole thing, and we discovered that, okay, you can actually do money on it, you can do uh, is the, the, money, the internet money can run on it. People began to experiment with it in different sectors. Hmm. So for instance, in, in media that you have today, the issue of piracy you know, is happening. The issue of copyright is happening. Mm. So I discovered that, okay, there's a technology called blockchain where your, your copyright, at the moment you own it, you own it forever until you transfer it legitimately. And nobody can actually copy, copy what you don't want them to copy. So companies like Uja and a lot of things came out and said, okay, Ujo, for instance, came out and said, this is what we're doing on the blockchain. Our company, I have a sister company where I also serve as chief operating officer. We, we're into a blockchain-focused company where solutions in Nigeria that we see and we discovered that there are problems within our country that need solutions, that blockchain is the solution and answer to. Take, for instance, as a company, we are solving two problems. Uh, you remember recently palliative this, palliative that, who, who lock up palliative, who didn't lock up palliative, oh, money is meant for this, and it didn't go through them. And we discovered, okay, on blockchain, there's transparency, on blockchain, there's openness, and therefore we can come as a company and say, okay, if you are sending money to vulnerable community elsewhere in Zamfara, Sokoto, or anywhere, or maybe somebody in somewhere in Lagos, or it can be Kenya, whatever it is, you know, that you're sending to whoever did, we are using the blockchain to also make sure we track that money until it gets to the beneficiary. Mm -hmm. And if the beneficiary spends that money, you know. So that's the kind of transparency that we bring. And the second solution we have in our company, for instance, uh, we're using blockchain to solve the credential problem. Of course, in the media, you know, they will say, Mr. A have credential, oh, Mr. B didn't go to this school, oh, you know, the credential he has is fake, oh, he didn't graduate from Unilag, he didn't graduate from Ibadan, he's that, that, that. So we say, oh, okay, there's a technology that is either you went to that school or not, because it is indelible, you cannot change it, it is forever there. So it means it's either you went to University A or you didn't go there. We're using blockchain to solve that, mm. you know. So a lot of problems within the economy, it has the potential to boost our economy and also make us stabilize properly. And younger, a lot of young companies are doing that. So when you give an envelope, you know, directive on all, you kill these startups, you know, that are possibly... Uh, positively working exactly. to transform our state and what is happening within our country. Yeah. Mori, you have some comments with you, then I'll come to... Oh, okay. Um, so this is Angela, and she says, crypto is here to stay and most likely for the future. Regulators need to quickly provide innovation for digital currencies. And then the second comment I have is from Roland, and he says, I stand with CBN on this. Better hold and find a better way to regulate it. Okay. Okay, so I want to take so on... That, that, Roland, yeah. that Roland sounds like a hater. Because he's not dealing with... <laughs> he's not a hater. That's no, but I want, to, I want to harp on what Roland said. Because I realized that when I was doing my little research on cryptocurrencies, and I realized that there's a low cost of transaction, I did, I did, um, if, you, if I'm correct, there's a low cost of um, transactions, and, you know, and these um, cryptocurrencies, because they don't require brick and mortar style of transaction, it has brought the cost of transaction very, very low, you know, there's no need for, um, what's it called, employee, employees, there's no need for wages, utility bills, you don't need to pay rent, you know, so this has really brought down the low cost of um, transaction, and I think maybe that's why a CBN, for instance, will be looking at it that if people now see that this cryptocurrency is, is, is cheaper for them, you know, they will, not, they will just completely move away from the, what's it called, the regular banking. And maybe that's why they are trying to protect, you know, um, the, the institutions, the bank institutions. Is, is that correct? Or I'm, I'm just maybe imagining things. <laughs> No, absolutely, you're, you're right. Uh, it has, it, 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 it has reduced the cost of doing business to a barest minimum. You know, uh, I transact with same cryptocurrency, I told you, and I get, as a matter of fact, when I do investigation, I just returned from Europe, and I did investigation from there. It is clumsy for you to send me money from Nigeria, from anywhere I do investigation. You just simply send me USDT, a stable coin, and I collect the cryptocurrency at a click. So I know it, I know the potential, I know the importance, the central bank knows, everybody knows. The, Ooh, the wow. new concern 
is that people are using the whole thing at times to maybe launder money or, or terror financing like you know what we're battling in Nigeria. And I say that is a legitimate concern. And because it is a legitimate concern, CBN have to develop capacity to check who is using it for money laundry, who is using it for terror financing, who is coming people with it. And the law enforcement have to be able to know who is coming people with it. The EFCC have to know who is coming people, who is defrauding people for them to investigate. Our police have to be there. The SEC have to know who is using it to defraud people in the name of investment. All these parasitas, everybody have to come together and as a collaboration to make sure that they develop capacity to actually regulate what they can regulate. You know, mm. but of course there are aspects of the whole uh, blockchain that is meant not to be regulated. But the whole globe, everywhere, different countries, everybody is coming together to see how do we at, at least regulate this so that back actors do not hijack this. And, and I'm involved with some of the regulation. Take for instance, the Financial Action Tax Force is, is, is the body that is meant to regulate people not committing money laundry or terror financing around the globe. Yeah. Um, Nigeria is a signatory to that. Nigeria is a member to that. And they came out and said, hey, yes, we know you guys are doing cryptocurrency transaction, but as far as you go to an exchange and you transfer money, that exchange have a, have a responsibility to, to make the next exchange know the person sending the money, the value is sending, and for the destination and probably even the source of fund where it's sending that money from. That is why it's obtainable in the normal conventional bank. Hmm. So we have to come together and say, okay, what do we do to make sure that exchanges, we call them visual asset service providers, VASP, how do they now respect and, com and comply with this financial action tax fund deadline uh, last year or thereabout? So we came together as, as a think tank around the globe, around 130 uh, of us, and we began to work to come out with a standard to make sure that when you're interacting with an exchange, the next exchange will also have uh, information about how you are transferring, who you are transferring to, and some of these details. But you know, this is new money. Mm. We don't have these infrastructures. You know, yeah. so this have to come together and we started thinking how to work around this to comply. And we, we, we did it around, around, like I said, around 130 of us around the globe. And we came up with a standard called in, uh, Inter-Messaging Standard, IVMS 101, you know, to make sure that if you are a cryptocurrency business, for instance, you are a visual asset side provider, you have to integrate with that, with, with that solution and use that standard to say anybody coming to you, this is the standard they have to be. So it's a laying block. We are just um, laying the block for actual people to begin to see how it can be regulated, how it can be checked. This is new and we cannot say ban it. We have to begin to build it as you go because we have to understand what people are doing Absolutely. as a matter of fact before you can now regulate properly. Okay, so, so that is why everywhere around the globe, they are not waiting. People are trying to see how they can regulate it. And that is the standard so far. Okay, so um, I have a comment from Biodun. It says, peer-to-peer -peer cannot be stopped. Most, uh, most remote workers are paid via crypto. That's um, um, from Biodun. Then um, Ade has sent in a message from the UK. It says, good evening, ladies. Federal government and CBN were afraid because of Soke generation um, not to be financially buoyant against 2023 elections. E even sending money from diaspora to Nigeria has to be deposited into a domiciliary account. How many Nigerians have a domiciliary account in Nigeria? The government officials has a lot of... Um, Routine dollars in, in septic tank, oh, rotting dollars rather in septic tanks, smelling quickly, get rid of. Uh, uh, so, so he, well, Adi has his own concern, and this is a lot of concern that people are saying about, you know, the fact that young people are, are, are making so much, you know, from trading online, yes. right? And yes. this has really yes. completely, because you know what? I started an MBA online, and trust me, just to pay $140 monthly is a headache for me because CBN put a cap, you know, that I think it's only $100 you can do transaction per day. So it was really stressful paying my school fees and all of that. If somebody comes and gives me a solution that you can use your Bitcoin to pay for this, I would quickly jump at it because it eases the ease of... Um, transactions, the ease of purchases online and all of that. So if you were to give a, a, an advice rather now to the central government of Nigeria, because we know that digital currency is the future. There is no stopping it. It's going to happen, right? Instead of banning it or, or fighting it, how do you think they should come together to embrace this technology, learn it, and now start to you know, work with the young people that are doing it to get solutions and probably, you know, integrate into their own stru existing structure. What would that advice be? 
The advice is still education. Mm. Um, the Safe Nigeria, for instance, a uh, pioneer within the cryptocurrency regulation in Africa. If, you, if you're following, you remember some couple of months ago, they issued out their own kind of uh, guidelines yeah. to saying, okay, if you interact with cryptocurrency, we see it as an investment asset. Take, for instance, even the statement from SEC. And again, uh, incidentally, I was part of the regulatory drafting committee of the SEC, and we came up with with something you know that they can begin to because I noticed a lot of projects from abroad are coming to defraud Nigerians because there's no regulation. Like I told you, uh, the place will be a festing uh, land for anybody to jump into. So we are pro-regulator. We believe that things should be regulated. Like one of the uh, audience commented, so the peer-to-peer -peer cannot be regulated. But yes, uh, a lot of activities go through exchanges where you can still follow some things and get some results and you some uh, simple to what they are doing. So I believe the central bank should do the same. There should not be discarded tones like we found. Like I told you, the sex say we recognize this is the feature of investment, but we are looking at it. If you want to do it, you have to come to us and define and prove to us it's not an investment. And if it is an investment, you have to regulate you because we are the body mandated to regulate investments in Nigeria. Okay, you so Mari- Stop there. Uh, 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 um, Nigeria as a country, you know, I don't know if you are aware that Nigeria have a national blockchain strategy, which mm -hmm. are incidentally, fortunately, contributed to. And Nidda said, Nigeria is meant to harness the potential of blockchain, and we are going to generate over $6 billion from blockchain. Mm -hmm. Of course. So this is the same country. And you have, this, you have the central bank say, ban it. So you know this. There's a policy disconnection somewhere. Mm. So, of course, that's why you're saying, where you're talking about coming together for all of them to actually have a collaboration to understand it. They all understood the, the, the potential. Like you had that discussion. You want to send money, it is difficult. I have interactions with them severally. And the last meeting I had with some of the management staff and some people from NFIU, for instance, and I said, when you do a draconian law on Forex and you make it tight for people to transact, you naturally shift them to this cryptocurrency Absolutely. that they never knew about earlier. Mm -hmm. You know, and people, because it takes just a click for you to send money across border, and you're good call. Like for me, it is the feature because most schools are rolling out programs like that. Like mm -hmm. you may be aware from my, from my credential, I actually studied MSC cryptocurrency and blockchain in the Europe. Yeah. You know, I went to a business school in France and I studied that. They know they have professors of distributed ledger, for instance, mm. professors that are teaching us cryptocurrency. Mm. They wouldn't waste their time teaching you and publishing books when they believe, they believe it's for criminals. So, so there's, a, there's, a, there's a lot of knowledge that has to Absolutely. come. Absolutely. But Nigeria, yeah, we are here, we will assist as much as we can. We have to make people to understand it. That is why the young people, I believe they have this picture that somebody is trying to cut them from their economic benefit. But I'm standing in the gap because I'm in that community. And I tell them, look, we have to engage the regulators to understand. You can't be doing, because like, like um, one of my colleagues was saying, I'm going to say I cannot invest in what I don't understand. The mm. same way you cannot regulate what you don't understand. Absolutely. So every one of us have to come together, understand it, and create, create a framework to actually check bad actors. Because bad actors will take over the space. Absolutely. And until we put some checks and make sure that we can check the bad actors, and when they come into it, we can arrest them, we can... We can investigate them. There, they will know they will clear up. But for now, they are having a field day, and, and that justifies the fear of the central bank. Absolutely. Maury, we ran out of time. Do you have one final comment, quickly? Oh, yeah, actually, a comment, not a question. I feel like I, I know what will make the CBA leave the ban of this thing. Oh, people should just come together and say that for every transaction, no, you give them a bit or one percent. Because they are not getting money from me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, no, that, they can't worry, worry, they can't get money from it. Why they can't get money from it is that it's not running on the on the kind of framework they have. Take for yeah. instance, I was talking, including with the central bank, and I said there's a report by the IMF, and the report says 80% of the central banks are not actually ready for even this whole thing because the law are not enabling them, technical capacity is not there. Ah. So there's a big story. There's a big it, story. story just well, happened. in one minute, yes or no? Do does cryptocurrency have the capacity to employ, um, give employment to jobless people in Nigeria? Absolutely. Yes. Okay, all right. All right. Thank you so much, Adeji. We, we had so much fun with you. We hope you come back again to educate us more on this. Thank you, Maury. Thank you for doing this with uh, me. 
<laughs> Thank you for having me. Thank All you. All right, so Waze was birthed from the need to inform, inspire, influence lives towards action. And this year, we're starting our CSR focus on curbing unemployment in Nigeria. So if you are a company, please partner with us by allocating internship slots. And, and if you're a job seeker, keep watching Waze and tell all your friends to keep watching as this will be an all-year-round engagement. Now, in case you missed today's quote, here it is again. It's very short and simple. Um, the future of money is digital currency. That's from Bill Gates. So we'll see you live tomorrow at 8 p.m. as we bring you another great conversation. Enjoy.